Welcome to another uh, Billy Bob's Punk and Ska Album of the Month interviews. This month, I chose the album All by the band Descendants and actually scored an interview with Milo. How freaking crazy is that? Freaking amazing. So, uh, I want to give a quick shout out to uh, MC Devlin for this fucking sweet ass shirt that you can pick up from his uh, cartel site. You better pick them up quick because they're selling out rather fast, if I understand. But if there's a high enough demand, he might, you know, print up another one. Who knows? Uh, and I want to uh, apologize ahead of time because the equipment I was working with this particular video did not uh, pan out as well. <laughs> which is obvious. But uh, Milo's end ended up coming out pretty clear. My end it ended up not, however. But uh, it's not really too terrible bad, but we're going to work on that in the future. Um, so, uh, anyway, we're going to segue right into uh, that uh, here in a second. Go, remember to uh, like and subscribe to my page. And... Uh, Join my group, my Facebook group, and here we go. Tell me about your first time. Uh, would they ask you to hop up on the mic at the practice? Yeah, well, I, I had come to the practice. Uh, I'd been to practice their practice a few times because I liked their single that they put out, Ride the Wild. And... And uh, after a few times of going to see them, I noticed that no one was no one was singing the songs because it was, uh, you know, they just they were practicing the instrumentals, but no one was singing. I thought, well, if no one's going to sing, I'll go ahead and sing one. I, I asked them, like, I know I know it's a hectic world, so why don't I just, you know, sing that while you guys practice it? And they go, yeah, that sounds cool. So I, I sang "It's a Hectic World." You know, I got a big ja a big charge out of that. And I mean, it probably was several weeks later when they finally said, you know what, he could, he should just be the singer because he has a lot. I think it was just because I had a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of excitement for the music. And they figured, well, that's a good person to have up, up in front there. Um, but and when they asked me, I was definitely, um, I mean, I was excited to do it, but I was, I, because I'd never really performed before or, uh, you know, I was kind of a shy kid too. So I definitely had a little bit of, I, I said yes, but I was also kind of scared shitless. I was like, oh no, what's what's going to happen now? Um, because I had no experience singing and I was, and I didn't know if I could even be in front of a crowd. So for the first several shows, it was always, it was really touch and go for me. I didn't know, like I, at some point I, most of the time I just stay, stare down at the ground and just, or turn my back to the audience. So I was not a natural performer, but I just had so much enthusiasm for you know, punk rock in general that I just wanted to make a go of it, basically. Yeah. I like food, food ain't good. I like food, food ain't good. Cheesy burger, cheesy fight. Too late, I give up the side. Too late, go with that too. Got my way or all they do. I like food. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, tell me about uh, that first uh, EP, the fat EP. Tell me about uh, recording and uh, how that, ex what was that experience like? Well, we, uh, we went out to Hollywood um, and we, we, we only booked like a few hours, you know, you, you, it was expensive to book a lot of times. So we just tried to see, well, what could we record in just a few hours of doing this? And uh, yeah, it was, uh, we drank a bunch of coffee before we, before we played. That's, you can hear that when you listen to that record and the coffee, the influence of coffee is pretty heavy. Um, but uh, yeah, it was my first, my first actual recording experience. So it was, I was really kind of, you know, taking it all in and, um, spot was the spot was recording us and he was the producer and right after we recorded he, or right before we were set to record he was recording a band called the chiefs and so i got to see him record this other band the chiefs who were way more professional than we were just because they'd done it before so i, I was just kind of taking it all in, in, in and just getting being really excited about the whole thing and it was a fun experience especially recording wiener schnitzel which is was done totally live, you know, two large cokes, two large fries, chili cheese. Are. And so we did all that completely live and, and that made it more fun. So it was, it was a great experience. Um, 
you know, and we still play a lot of those songs to this day because they just it kind of encap encapsulates the kind of overly caffeinated uh, descendants uh, uh, phase. So yeah, I see you drinking coffee too. So there we go. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I said a minute ago, this is kind of an experiment. Um, I only had enough to make a half a cup of coffee, so I threw some uh, special gunpowder tea in it to try to boost it to where it yeah. needed to be, and it actually turned out quite nice. It's quite nice. Yeah, Lapsang Sushong is another good one for, for the caffeine. It, it has a really smoky flavor. That's, it probably would go good with coffee, I would think. So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So, so let's move on to um, Milo Goes to College. That's a phenomenal album. Like, you know, obviously one of the pinnacle. Uh, punk rock albums ever everyone everyone draws influence from that one tell, tell me about that album a little well yeah so after we did the fatty p i think we probably spent at least i'm gonna say a year basically just doing a lot of practicing we played shows obviously in the la area but a lot of practicing so by the time we were slated to record that record the mile goes to college record we had, we had just you know beat these songs into submission and you know, everything was really, really tight. Uh, so we go, we, and that one was done in Redondo Beach at, uh, um, uh, I'm forgetting the name of the studio, um, Total, Total Access, Total Access Studio in Redondo Beach. So I'd ride my bike from my home over to the recording studio to lay down vocals. And, you know, it was all very kind of, it was fun because we could just kind of show up and do some stuff and then I could take off and, you know, again, it was the same thing was done. It was mostly of it that was done live. Just the vocals were kind of the vocals and guitar over dubs were done after the fact. But uh, yeah, it was uh, it was a good experience because it was my first ability. I had my first opportunity to to contribute songs of my own to the band. Uh, I hadn't really been able to do that before that point. So I was able to record Hope with them and and lyrics for M16 and this kind of thing. And so it, I felt like we were, you know, much more of a, like a equal, equal players in the, in the game kind of thing. So yeah. Yeah. My goes to college was so much fun to make. And um, you know, it's funny cause I didn't really, I didn't really re realize it had an impact on people till many, many years later. I mean, we put it out and you know, it just, it did, you don't really know how it's, how it's going to be uh, viewed by people till, you know, several years later, basically. Yeah, and then and then you did go off to college. What what was your favorite class? Um, I I took this poetry class, which I mean it's, <laughs> I mean all my science classes were great, but you know it was the poetry class that I took, where it was kind of like you know way outside my my comfort zone. I was not a literature buff, uh, but I decided you know maybe I could take this poetry class and. It'll help me write lyrics, I guess. I, that was my thinking is that maybe it'll help me write some words for songs. Um, and in fact, I guess I did write the song Impressions uh, based upon based upon a, a poem that I wrote in that class. So it did, you know, help some, but that was just kind of a fun, you know, thing to do just uh, uh, completely at 180 degrees because I was taking all science courses and here I am taking this like poetry course. So that was kind of fun. Yeah, yeah. I, I I loved all my science courses in class. I used up all my electives uh, in science classes, even though I didn't get a science degree. You know, oh, yeah. I, was the you... Only, I was the only person I know that used up an elective, two electives to um to get uh to take chemistry. Oh, that's <laughs> cool. Yeah. yeah, it was fun. It was fun. I found it fascinating. I found it fascinating. Yeah, chemistry is not easy too. So kudos. Yeah, yeah. I got a B, but you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever. But anyway, uh, then you uh, decided to actually uh, come back and make uh, more music and recorded uh, uh, I Don't Want to Grow Up. Another yep. great album, another yep. very classic album. Uh, what was. Uh, yeah, so that one um, I was down at I was down at college. I was, you know, and, and, and thinking, you know, I'm not really going to do music anymore because I'm trying to be a scientist or whatever. And Bill had contacted me 
to to do some backing vocals on the Loose Nut record. That's Black Flag's Loose Nut record. So I came up to uh, to do book backing vocals for Loose Nut, and he showed me some songs that he'd written. One of which was Silly Girl, and I was just like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! This is so good." Um, and I said, "Hey, I've got some songs too." And we kind of, you know, ha- we kind of hatched up a, you know, an idea that maybe we could try to put another record out at that point. Um, and we had Tony playing with us, but Frank, the guitar player, had already he'd already moved up to Oregon. So then we had this other guy, Ray Ray Cooper playing guitar on that one. He had he had joined the band as a fifth member back in 80, 83, 80, yeah, 83 or thereabouts. Um, so he he moved on, he moved into the lead guitar role. And yeah, we we recorded that one up in Hollywood. Um yeah, I can't remember the studio, but at any rate, it was done up in Hollywood and we uh yeah, Bill Bill had all these great like pop songs. All of a sudden we were like a pop band, you know, because we'd written Silly Girl and and I'd written, you know, cheesy pop songs. We had all these like really romantic love songs that that came in, that came into that record. Um, maybe balancing out all the all the nasty songs that we also had at the same time. So yeah, that was a fun one. Yeah. And like when when you come back. Uh... You guys just put out a stream of, of uh, albums over the next several years, like just like one right after another. Uh, the next one was um, was Enjoy, which was a uh, uh, Enjoy was uh, awesome in the sense that you get more of a feel of you guys' personalities. It shows through your genuine characters in that in that album. Yeah, mainly because uh, our personalities at that point was all about touring. We were touring quite a bit, and you get on the on the road like that when you're with three other guys for many many months you you tend to kind of you're down in the, in the trenches with them and it you know you we just had our own language for everything that's why when you look at enjoy the cover it's got all these fake names which is basically different words for shit and fart and stuff and that's what that's the level of where our brain was at we were just so you know tour damaged that's what we called it back then we we're tour damaged uh because of being on the road and so that record you can hear the tour damage uh, and some of the song titles or some and just some of the some of the things that we tried to do uh you know that were a little different and and even in my voice my voice is just really husky on that record because it's like oh i just came back off the road so that was a fun record to make uh, you know i think it doesn't it hasn't really been a record that we play a lot off of just because maybe it, maybe some of that stuff about farting and stuff doesn't really whether whether the the test of time i don't know <laughs> although i still like to fart you know so yeah yeah and uh and then and then all came out which is one of my all-time favorite uh descendants albums right because um the there's a lot more i want to say progressive influence in it like I, I don't want to classify you guys as progressive uh, punk rock, but that is almost there's some of the characteristics of progressive music are totally in that album. <laughs> and, yep. and it blows my mind. Like, uh, yep. So that was the influence of Stefan. We had uh, Carl and Stefan come in to the band at the same time after the all after the after the enjoy record. Uh, we, we lost the bass player and the guitar player, the previous ones. And then we had to find new guys and we stumbled upon Carl first, who just, he was happened to be uh, in the background listening when Bill called someone in Utah about be joining the band and Carl's in the background going, I'll join me. I'll be, I'll be your bass player. So he signs up to be play bass and he gets his friend Stefan to move out uh, to LA who was actually living in DC at the time. So it was a two for one deal. We got both of them in. They were like best friends with each other. And they just really meshed really well with the band. And then Stefan's bringing in this crazy, crazy music. I mean, he when he was in D.C., he started playing a classical guitar and he was learning all these classical pieces and stuff. So he brought in this one classical piece and that ended up being impressions, which is I, I, put, I put lyrics over, you know, but he brought in stuff like, you know, the music for Iceman and he brought in 
the music for schizophrenia. And it was just like, whoa, this is just way out of left field. But he really, he fit in really well with the band because Bill, Bill and he would listen to like uh, the Mahavishnu orchestra all the time and, and get into all that kind of proggy stuff, you know? Oh yeah. So, I mean, yeah, that was, I mean, you, you heard Mahavishnu in the, in the all records because of Stefan coming in and, you know, educating us all on, on that, on that style of music, John McLaughlin and that kind of thing. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that, that album, I mean, we, there's certain songs that we still play on that one uh, live. Uh, we, we obviously don't play something like schizophrenia anymore because it's shite. It's no good, <laughs> but uh, it's, you know, you, sometimes you got to stick your neck out and do something really radical. And, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. That's the way, that's the way I feel about schizophrenia. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I, I like that progressive edge. And then uh, the following track with the end track, Uranus. Uranus, yeah. Which is yeah. barely, a, which is barely a song, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah. Good stuff. It's good. It's great stuff. It's great stuff. Don't wonder why. Don't wonder why. Don't wonder why. Uh, so you went to pursue uh, all in, in yeah. science. All of y'all are interested in science. Yeah, uh, but uh, before you came back, uh, I stumbled across something called Milestone. Yeah, when I was down in in, in grad school down in San Diego, uh, I came upon this band that was playing in a in a practice room on campus, and I was just checking out their the stuff, and I I was kind of into it, and so I I would I it's the same thing I did with. The, with the descendants where I would, I would go to their practices and just hang around and be like, and then finally I say, Hey, looks like you guys need a singer. And they were like, cool. Yeah. So I, you know, we, I was in that band, I maybe a year, maybe a year and change. And uh, we never really put, we never put any studio albums out, but there's a, there's a live album that where of us, where we just played in this radio station that someone uh, put out this guy, this guy who runs elastic records, put out put up put out the milestone cd um i like some of those songs i mean some of them actually were done by all later on or uh, uh like uh, just like them was it was originally uh, an all uh, was originally a milestone song and it became an all song later on so i think we you know we 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 definitely you know kind of uh had had a good run even if it was only a year and change we it was we played shows in san diego mostly some in la and I love those guys. They were great. Um, I still see Jovi to this day. He's, he was the bass player. So yeah, fun times. That's awesome. That's awesome. Cause there was very little information about that floating around the internet. So it was, it, yeah. it, it, it's great to hear like the story behind it. Yeah, it happened. It, it, it happened and, and it was, uh, and it produced some music, but just that music is tucked away on this live record. And um, you know, I, I, I still think about resurrecting some of the songs off, off of that off during from that band because some of them is, I feel like could still be relevant today for sure. Yeah. Awesome. So and then but and then you come back to you came back to the descendants for uh, everything sucks. Uh for what like a, a year or two yeah 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 we i was in grad school and i was i don't know i was actually at that point i was a postdoc i was post postgraduate school doing like postdoctoral research and i was just kind of not feeling very good about science at that point um feeling like my i'd reached a, i'd kind of kind of come up against a brick wall and so then I'd written some songs and I'd showed him the bill and, and he said, well, yeah, we can make another Descendants record. And I started making this record, which turned out to be Everything Sucks. I flew out to Fort Collins and we did it. And I got really excited about like how, how good it turned out. I mean, I love the way it turned out. We, I think we recorded maybe 35 songs, you know, for it and then pared that down. So I think what was left to go on the record was really good quality stuff. And I told him, you know what, I feel like I feel like maybe I should tour or maybe we should tour to support this record. Cause I felt like it, it had some potential to be, you know, one of our best ones. And so we did, we toured for about a year after that um, very grueling tour. 
probably more touring than we had ever done before just in that one year. This would be 1996, 97. Um, and at the end of it, I said, I'm going back to science. Everyone was completely, every, everyone was completely exhausted from the, from the year of touring. And we all kind of went back to our corners <laughs> and uh, our corners of the world. And I, I went back to science and Bill went back to the, the blasting room studio and back to making more all records. I kind of think so. Um, that was, I mean, that was a great experience just because at that point, when we go out and we, when we, when we go out and tour, we could be, we could really see the world. I mean, back in the eighties, you tour the U S and you felt like, okay, that's the end of it. But now in the nineties, we were able to go over to Europe and, and you really see, see that part of the world. And um, you know, now, now that, and now these days we go all over the world, we go to Japan and Australia and all that kind of stuff. So it's all been, it's all been a blast. Yeah. But it must be pretty cool to be you with your brother such a back protecting you. Must be pretty cool to know you belong. But, but then you went, then you jump right back into science because uh, science is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but you periodically, um, what what was it? You you just uh, accumulate songs and was like, I just need to put out a Descendants album every uh, once in a while because yeah, you know, I mean, I'm I'm not a I'm not a very prolific songwriter, so uh, it would take a while. Like you know, maybe in the next, and of course my my head's usually in the science, and I'm and I, that's that's pretty much where all my creative, where it's pretty much where I wanted all my creativity to go was to be into the science. But I need, I, I found that I still needed some kind of an outlet for the music. Uh, and so in, I think in 2002, I uh, had some new songs, again, <laughs> more new songs and talked to Bill and he said, okay, let's put out another record. And so then he came out to Delaware and helped me record vocals out, out, out in Delaware where I live now. Um, and that's, that was the cool of you record, um, which I, I told him, look, there's no way I can tour to support this record because I'm, I'm right in the midst of, you know, developing my scientific career. At that point, I had my first full-time science job and I just felt like there's no way I can go on tour to support it. So we just put out cool to be you on fat records and just moved on after that. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, uh, that that record kind of stands alone as being the one that we didn't really tour to support ever. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, we, we still play some songs off of that. Not as many though. I, I feel like my, my performance there was not quite as good just because I wasn't really in the thick of the music world. I wasn't really like, you know, living and breathing music. I wasn't, my voice wasn't tough, toughened up by touring or anything like that. So I mean, I did my best, basically, and, and and that was what you get, basically. So, it was a great album. It was a great album. You haven't released anything that's that's been terrible yet. So, <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Good. Yeah, great feedback by me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks, Billy. <laughs> to uh hypercapium spasinate and spaz hazard those are yeah. fun yeah those are uh yeah no i was i mean i i i when, once we got back together like for real in like 2011 is when we really started hitting the touring hard again um and of course it wasn't that long after that that i said hey well let's put out a record but it, it did take a while you know i guess five years basically to kind of accumulate the songs and to get to get the time to do it that finally came out in 2016 but we these were all songs that were probably written in the early 2010s or you know 2010 2011 2012 um and it was yeah i think it, it i think it reflects us being kind of like fully grown up at this point because all the songs are about uh you know infidelity and parent being parents and and there's no childlike uh aspirations anymore it's just kind of like we're we're, we're grown-ups you know um but yeah that's a record we play a lot of live because some of those songs are just so much fun to play live and we we play songs like victim live and shameless halo and we play without love and uh you know the list goes on and on we we, we probably play about half that record live um just because it's so much fun i feel like we really we really stayed true to like the our aggressive our aggressive punk roots on that one because songs like victim of me still really bring 
nastiness and like in your face kind of guitar and this kind of thing. So it's a great record. It's a great sounding record just from the guitar standpoint, for sure. Yeah. You've released a couple of singles uh, in between that uh, and your your newest album, Ninth and Walnut. But I want to touch base on your little political singles that you're putting out, like uh, "Who Are We" and that's that uh, that's the breaks. Yeah, well, I mean, I just got I maybe because I had so much free time, or maybe just because actually I think it was just I was so dismayed at the whole what was happening, uh, you know, I, I felt like we were descending into a period of potential anti-democratic kind of influences in the government. And, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to make a statement that was more pro-democracy and less, you know, pro, pro-democracy, anti-fascism. And that's where who we are kind of comes from. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I, I did through through a period where the only thing I felt like I could write was something that was, you know, political, just because it, it became an obsession of mine, just how bad things were going. Um, and so I just figured, well, I can only write about what affects me, what what gets me kind of, you know, worked up. And so for better or for worse, it was all this stuff, all this political stuff. That's where all the political stuff comes from, just from having that sticking in my in my craw and I got to get it out. Basically, I got to say it, basically. So now that I've said it, my hope is that I can move on. I've, I've said all I need to say <laughs> politically. And, you know, I think maybe at this point I can move on and not be not be that political guy. Basically, um, I should say, I mean, I'm normally only a quarter of the songwriting. But during that period, I wrote all the songs because I was the one kind of being all like pissed off about it, uh, you know, or, or, I mean, they were, the other band members were all pissed off about it, but, you know, we, we, we do have this thing in the band of like, you know, we're not a political band. I mean, we don't feel like we're a political band. And so why should all the songs be so, so political? So I think basically in the, in the path going forward, we we'll probably won't be writing so much political stuff. And, and uh, yeah, that's, that's my hope, at least. Like, I, I got to learn how to write songs again that aren't that aren't just like railing at the government. That's that's my new thing, the new challenge. Uh, and um, and I love your new old school album. I love- yeah, Ninth and Walnut. Those songs were written in the 70s <laughs> and, mean, you, and, you, and those are the songs you had to learn when you first joined the band right some of them yes yes i mean i'd say half of the songs i learned when i first joined so when we got around to recording it i mean actually they recorded the backing tracks in 2002 i think or 2003 or thereabouts but then then that kind of sat around and then finally during covid i had all this you know extra free time and i thought well now's the time to do this and so i recorded them the other half of the songs that i hadn't done back in the day were songs that they'd already dropped by the time I, the band had already kind of shelved them or you know put them put them in their in their rearview mirror and some of those are my favorite ones like songs like nightage where i never had the chance to even do that one back in 80 1980 when i joined so that was real exciting for me to, to take a to take a stab at something like nightage and, and you know i felt like you know that's one of my favorite records on my favorite songs in the record, just because it's so aggressive and so fun to sing, you know. Um, but yeah, that 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 was a real fun project, just because you go through the you're going through the whole history of the band from that period of 1978, 79, 1980, and just you know you're hearing all these young teenage voices in, in, on those songs, and uh, yeah, it's 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 so much fun to. It was fun to kind of reminisce about those times. And actually, many of the songs were written by Frank Nevetta, who's now long past. He died several years ago. Yeah, yeah, our rest in peace. And uh, I, I just felt like I was kind of communing with, somehow with Frank again when I was doing it, because he was right there in the room with me, because, you know, a lot of the lyrics were his. And and he was he was the most punk guy in the band. I mean, you know, you wouldn't know it to look at him because he didn't look punk, but he was a motherfucking punk based upon his 
what he was writing in this in his songs you know really just kind of huge chip on his shoulder and so much so much like anger at the world you know and you can hear that in some of the ninth and walnut stuff for sure how freaking amazing was that freaking awesome very informative i even got him to answer questions about uh milestone and uh that impressions uh how how we uh came up with the lyrics for that freaking awesome right uh so um i want to thank milo for taking the time to uh answer all these questions i also want to take the time to thank you the viewer for uh watching my said video uh please uh take the time and uh like and subscribe to my youtube channel as well as join my facebook group if you have not yet the it's the whole reason i am doing these uh videos to begin with um i i do apologize for the quality on my end uh next time i am hoping to have better quality equipment to work with i'm gonna head down to uh highway 72 uh pond center and talk to david in there he seems to have a uh, several computers in there that uh really really uh decent computers for a reasonable price i mean because all of his stuff is reasonably priced down there so maybe uh we could work something out and i could uh have something better to work with but uh so uh and until next time uh like and subscribe and uh have a wonderful time later